everyone. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a great start to your week. I hope you're in full Valentine sewing mode. And if you're not quite there yet, that's okay. I'm going to give you some inspiration today for a really cute Valentine that you can make for just about anybody on your gift making list, whether you're going to make some Valentines for a group of teachers or your sewing buddies or really honestly anyone. Um, so it's a quick and easy project, but you can make it as complicated or I guess more complex depending on the techniques that you want to incorporate into the project. So I'm going to go through a very basic version and then we'll talk about ways we can embellish and things we can add to it that will also help us practice our skills. So um, let's see, before we get started though, of course we've got to take care of some business. We've got a great sale going on right now at sulky.com. I'm just gonna head to sulky.com right now uh, so that I can tell you all about it. But last week we talked about it as well, um, but our rolls and bolts sale is still going on. And I'm just grabbing an image so that I can share that with you. When you head to sulky.com, this is going to be what you see right up at the top of the website. 35% off rolls and bolts of stabilizer. This is, dare I say, our biggest sale of the year. You can get really, really great deals on the stabilizers that you use most often, including Perfect Applique Fusible Web. So if you like to do applique projects, which actually today we're going to be talking about an applique project, it's applique done in the hoop of your embroidery machine. But you can also do it, of course, if you don't have an embroidery machine. There's so many applique projects out there in the universe and Sulky Perfect Applique Fusible Web is quite honestly, I mean, I know I work for Sulky and everything, but... <laughs> Perfect Applique is the lightest weight fusible web that has the best bond over time. It doesn't change the hand of your fabric, keeps things nice and soft so you don't have these crispy appliques that, you know, don't kind of flow with your fabric, especially on a wearable. Um, but Perfect Applique, if you haven't used it before, it is the best fusible web. All right. So off of my soapbox on that particular product, but rolls and bolts on sale, 35% off. So grab up your favorites, restock your sewing room because we're going to have so many projects coming your way. You might as well grab up the ones that you use most often. All right. Lots of you coming in and saying hello. Good morning. Lots of people having much better weather than we've been having in the last couple of weeks when we were in our giant deep freeze. So I hope that you're experiencing a little bit of sunshine these days. It just makes the winter so much more bearable when the sun decides to come out. So lots of you saying that you're having some better weather. So that is fantastic. Let's use that as fuel to get our, you know, creative juices flowing. <laughs> and make sure that you are commenting, chatting with me, giving me those great emojis, somehow engaging with the post today because I have a great giveaway for one lucky viewer who is doing those things. I'm going to be giving away a machine embroidery collection. This is the collection that I'm going to be talking about today that I used on today's project. It is our cup of tea machine embroidery collection. And I'm going to go over or I'm going to show you the designs in this collection in a little bit greater detail momentarily here. But this is going to be our giveaway today, the Machine Embroidery Collection. You can also grab up this collection as part of a palette. The palette means that you're also getting 10 spools of Sulky Rayon Thread in addition to getting the designs as well. And the design collection includes all six of the designs you see here in three sizes. So you can get it for a 4x4 four four hoop, a 5x7 hoop, or all the way up to a six by 10 hoop as well. So you can create some large scale projects with them as well. But if all you have is a four by four hoop, 
you can use the smaller designs to create lots of fun um, tea themed or coffee themed or um, we'll go over it momentarily. All right. So be sure all you have to do is comment, say hello, drop me a line, ask a question, give me those emojis. You also have to make sure to have liked the Sulky Facebook page if you're watching on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching there. And that way I can contact you if you are today's winner. All right. Isn't it lovely? Yes, it is, Heather. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What else? What other business do we have to discuss? Um, is everyone registered for our 3D spring wall hanging embroidery session with designs by Juju? I recognize a lot of your names from last week when we really kind of dove into this project um, and, you know, talked about everything that we're going to learn during this embroidery session. So I know a lot of you are already registered, but if you are not, this embroidery session will be active on February 13th. It is not a live event. It's an on-demand, longer format session with much more video content than we could ever bring you in a one-hour uh, webcast. So lots of information for you to, you know, uh, for you to grab while you're making your project. Uh, lots of resources to help you through it. And access to Julie of Designs by Juju, so you can ask your questions directly to the digitizer of this project. Um, you know, there's really no better way than to learn how something comes together than from the person who created it. So um, I really hope that you will join us for this session. All you have to do is register, and we also have kits available for this wall hanging. The wall hanging comes together in three or four hoopings, I can't remember. So you will create these freestanding elements in the hoop, and then you will join them together with buttons and buttonholes and ribbon, and it's the cutest thing. You can also change around some of the elements and you can swap out the sign for different occasions or to really, really say whatever you want. Uh, the design collection that you will get when you register for the event the collections included for the whole project when you register, you'll get three signs. One of them is a blank sign, and Julie uh, gives an entire video tutorial on how to use software to customize that sign. You can also merge a design you already have with the sign design as well. You can use a font that's built into your machine, write your last name, all kinds of options. Also, you can get a sign that already says Home Sweet Home, which is pictured here, and another sign that says Welcome Spring. So lots of different ways you can personalize this project, and you will learn the entire tutorial step-by-step step from start to finish in our embroidery sewing session. So for the cost of the session, you're basically getting all of these beautiful 3D designs for free. Or... You're purchasing the designs and getting the whole video tutorial for free. Any way you look at it, it's a great deal. So I hope you will join us for that. If you're interested in seeing what the kit components look like, the kit contains sulky puffy foam. This is what we're going to use as the interlining to make all of those freestanding elements 3D so that they kind of pop at you when you're hanging it on your wall. Also included is all of those beautiful Riley Blake fabrics that you see here as well as ribbon, the buttons, and all this beautiful Sulky thread, as well as Sulky Fabrisolvi stabilizer. That's what we're gonna build these 3D elements on in the hoop of our machines. All right, Heather says, I see the embroidery designs are all included with registration. Is this right? That is correct. Um, and there's multiple sizes of designs as well. So you can choose to make the five by seven uh, hooping. So each one of those uh, hoopings is done in a five by seven hoop, or you can do a six by 10, um, all the way up to a nine and a half by 14 hoop. So as you can imagine, that's gonna make a really large scale wall hanging. It'll take up a good portion of your front door if that's where you wanna hang it or screen door, what have you, um, because you're building each component in a nine by 14 or nine and a half by 14 size hoop. 
So all of those sizes will be or is included with your registration fee for the, the class. All right. Let's see. Any more questions about Bonnie says that is so cute. I love it. Lots of people saying really cute project. Love the designs. And we love working with designs by Juju. If you've never used one of their designs, they're just flawless and they have a really good attention to detail with the stitches and the stitch types and the stitch fills that they choose for different portions of their designs. For example, the outside edging of these 3D components, it's not just a simple satin stitch. It's a satin stitch that has like a wave going through it. So it has greater coverage. You don't have any fabric or stabilizer or puffy foam kind of poking through the stitches. It's a beautiful finish. It's just very thoughtfully digitized as are all of their designs. I just, I go way back with designs by Juju and my love for them. And I'm just so glad to be working with them these days here at Sulky. So if you've never tried a Designs by Juju uh, design, they have in the hoop designs, they have full projects, they have end-to-end uh, -end quilting designs that we've talked about before here on So What. Um, and of course, so many uh, flat fill designs, lettering designs, monograms, I mean, you name it. Um, and they're they're just beautiful, really great aesthetic and appeals to, you know, so many different decor styles and things like that. All right. Let's see. Michelle says, I've registered for the 3D wall hanging and received my kit. All right. You are ready to go. Uh, Cheryl says, I've never tried a sulky design. Please pick me. All right. Uh, lots of people saying, I love Juju designs. I have many. They are great to work with. Their designs make you feel very successful. I couldn't agree more. Um, some people might look at this project and think, you know, oh, this is going to take forever and um, this large scale thing. But you know what? Our embroidery machine is doing most of the work for us. We just have to make sure that we're layering our fabrics at the right time. Um, and following the instructions in the videos, and everybody's going to have a beautiful wall hanging when it is all complete. All right, let's see. So let's get into, ooh, actually, no. Before we get into today's project, I have one more um, thing to ask of all of you. So, you know, as you know, evidenced by what I was just talking about, we bring you so much content every month in videos, webcasts, um, sessions, blog posts, patterns, designs, right? You name it. Of course, that's what we're all here talking about week to week. And I just really want to make sure that I'm bringing you the things that you want to see. So I really, really welcome your feedback all the time. If you wouldn't mind dropping a line to info at sulky.com, let us know what you want to see more of. Let us know the techniques that you want to learn because those are the things I want to give to you. So if you are, you know, dipping your toe in the water of quilting and you want some more tutorials on that, let's talk about it. Um, if you want to expand your garment making potential or techniques, let me know and we can dive into that. I just want to make sure everybody's getting what they want to get here. And I love chit-chatting with you every single week because we always share ideas and it helps me kind of, you know, use those ideas as a springboard for other things to bring to the table. So I had this idea um, because, you know, I try to keep my finger on the pulse of trends that I'm seeing on Instagram, in the store windows, um, on the runways, just wherever I happen to be. I'm always kind of, I, I have a sketchbook in my tote bag at all times so that I can, you know, jot things down or make quick sketches, um, take note of colors that I'm seeing even at the fabric store and things like that. Um, and I'm really seeing a lot of people wearing the loungewear, wearing the comfy pant, I like to call it, 
Um, even, you know, ditching the jeans. I'm not seeing people wearing um, a whole lot of jeans these days. Um, it's kind of dressed up sweats and things like that. And I, th I think this all kind of has to do with when we were all sheltering in place, we got really comfy cozy, right? And now we're kind of transitioning. Um, we still want to have that comfort, but we want it to be a little bit more stylish because, hey, we're out in the world again. This is what I'm attributing it to. So all of that to say, I would really like to do a lounge pant of sorts that has really pretty machine embroidery going down the leg of it. You know, way back when, when machine embroidery was really becoming hot with home sewers specifically, there was a lot of embroidery on denim, embroidery down the legs of jeans, on the cuffs of jeans, on the pockets of jeans. But I am thinking we dress up these lounge pants. So we have our comfy pant, but we're also putting our embroidery out there to just kind of kick it up a little notch. Now, I don't mean going crazy and adding rhinestones and like, I mean, of course, we can still do that if we want to. I just mean a little something, something, a little thread work on the pants. So I would like to hear from you. Is this something that interests you? Would you you know, want to learn more about making something like this to fit your body. Um, we could use a really simple pattern that looks great on all figures. Um, you know, I I got my hands on some really fantastically buttery fabric that I'm thinking of using for these lounge pants. It is called a peached performance fabric. It's very stretchy but it has a heavier weight to it. So it's not like a leggings weight where, you know, when you bend over, you can see your everything's, right? This has a heavier weight to it, so it's a little bit more substantial, but not so much that it makes you hot, okay? It's a performance fabric, so it, you know, cools you down when you need it to cool you down, warms you up when you need it to warm you up. Does this make sense? All right. So this is what I'm thinking with embroidery and maybe some different styles too. So if you like a capri pant, you could do a capri pant version. If you like more of a yoga pant silhouette, we could do that. Um, but loungy, comfortable, large waistband too. So we have room to groove. We could call them our Thanksgiving pants or our eating pants. <laughs> All right. So let's see what everybody says. Sharon says, yes, please. Um, nice pants fabric. Janice says, definitely. Um, embroidery on pant legs would be a good project to try. I did flowers on a pair of my jeans. Sweats are another venue I have not tried. Um, lounge pants with embroidery. Sounds good. Um, would there be a kit? Of course there would be a kit. <laughs> I think we would do a kit so that everybody can get this fantastic fabric because not all places have these really great performance weight fabrics that we feel so good in. I mean, when I go to my local fabric store and, you know, it's not like I live out in the boondocks, very suburban, um, but when I go to my local fabric store, even if I'm looking for just a knit fabric to make a t-shirt, there's like four options and the prints are hideous if there are any. Sorry to say. Um, there's just not a huge variety. Um, you know, they'll have the basics of whites and grays and blacks, but I don't always want that, especially as a sewer. I mean, I know I just was showing you some charcoal um, pants, but when we're going to jazz it up with embroidery. I like the basic of like a gray or a black so that the thread work really pops. All right. Bonnie says I would love a kit for that. Kit would be even better. Count me in. All right. And yes, we don't want to open the leg seams because then we got to put them back together. So what we would do is embroider like a panel down the side of the pant and inset it into the pant pattern and potentially have a pocket up there too. We got to have pockets in the pants. You you just, you got to have a pocket in the pants or two. All right. Well, thank you for all of your feedback. So it's good to know 
Um, and yes, fabric is the issue. It, it is. All right. I buy black only, no prints. Yep, good to know. Um, de dessert pants. Yep, we'll call them dessert pants. Lounge pants slash dessert pants. All right, it sounds like everybody is on board and learning how to embroider the stretchy fabric. This is what I think we would focus on um, with the kit is how to stabilize it so that when you're wearing the pant, it doesn't look like you have this bulletproof section, you know, running down your thigh. Of course, we don't want that. We want it to flow with our body and stretch with our body. So I would definitely be teaching how to overcome the stretch, how to sew with the stretch. Um, and I'm just saying National Serger Month is coming up. How many of you out there own a serger, hardly ever use it, not sure what to do with it. It's collecting dust. Let's pull them out. Let's make some lounge pants. Let's add some embroidery. And we're going to look great and still be comfortable. <laughs> All right. Everyone's saying black pants. Add the pockets for sure. All right. Good to know. Um, would it require a serger? No, absolutely not. But it. I think the serger would be... Um, we, we, let's do two options, right? We'll show serger construction. We'll also show how to set up your regular sewing machine for sewing stretchy knits. That way you don't have to have a serger, but if you have one, it just makes it all the more easier. Um, and of course, different threads to use in your serger and for the embroidery itself. Um, so lots of stuff to dive into with this topic. So I think... Um, maybe we should develop something like this. All right. Um, would love to use my serger more. Fantastic. All right. I, I need a serger support group because I have two sergers. Because <laughs> um, I love using them. And I'm just like you. I want to find more reasons to use it because it just sews everything so fast, especially when you're working on a stretchy fabric or a lofty fabric that might require some different adjustments to your regular sewing machine. You can just zip right through those on your serger. So, all right. Let's see. Nancy is saying, I need to learn this. Sounds good to me. Um, yes, on the serger product project. Um, all right. And embroidering on stretch. Okay. Good to know. All right. Thanks, everybody. Now we can get to today's project, which has nothing to do with stretch fabric at all. Um, but it's a cute project that you can make for Valentine's Day, for Galentine's Day, as they say, for just about anybody you're thinking of giving a little gift to. It makes a great birthday gift, Mother's Day gift, a gift for no reason at all. Um, you know, at I was at Target the other day, and of course, it's Valentine's Day all over the place, right? It pretty much has been since Christmas time. Um, but at any rate, they had the cutest little Valentine mugs. Now, don't get me wrong. I do not need another mug in my house, but I want all the mugs, okay? <laughs> and I have heard from some teachers who are like, please don't get me a mug. <laughs> Because I'm sure they get so many mugs as gifts. But um, at any rate, they have really cute mugs. They say, you're sweet. They have little conversation hearts on some of them. They're so, so cute. So I was thinking, let's make a Valentine-themed mug rug that can go with an existing mug. Or you can grab up one of the cute mugs that you see out there in the universe, wrap it up with a hot cocoa bomb or some little chocolates, and you have the cutest little gift with very little investment. And what we're gonna make today, this mug rug, you can really dive into your scrap bin, grab out some fabrics, and you're good to go. We just need a little stabilizer, our embroidery collection, maybe even some ribbons and trim, and you're off to the races. And you can complete this in no time. So it's a really great project to make for many, many people. Maybe you, you belong to a sewing guild and there's 10 of you and you want to make a little gift for everybody for Valentine's Day. Perfect little gift. 
So we need a front fabric, we need a background fabric of your choice, and honestly, these can be any size. There is really no rule about the size of a mug rug. I basically sized mine to fit the embroidery design I was choosing, and then I offset the embroidery design to leave room for the little mug or cookie or what have you to sit so that you can still admire your cute little design and not have it covered up by your mug. All right, so size it however you want, but if you want the exact dimensions that I used for this, for all the materials and everything, that is on the Sulky blog at blog.sulky.com. And I link directly to that blog post for the full tutorial in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing the whole description, click on the see more button and the whole description will pop out and you'll find all the live links for everything I'm talking about today, including the full tutorial for this if you want exact dimensions and all that jazz. So no need to take notes. You can head on over to the blog when we're done chatting today and get the full tutorial right there. So here is our cute little mug rug with a cute little mug on top of it as well. And here again is the machine embroidery collection that I worked from. I chose the Love You More design here, but there's lots of different designs within this collection that you could use for your mug rug. Um, I'll show you those momentarily, but this is a picture of the machine embroidery palette. As I mentioned earlier, palettes, uh, when we use the word palette, that means you're getting a whole slew of threads and then you're also getting the machine embroidery collection. So again, this collection comes with six designs in three sizes. So you can use a four by four hoop and use a smaller design. This is the design for the five by seven hoop. And then it goes all the way up to a six by 10 hoop as well. So you can create a placemat if you want to using this exact same tutorial, changing up the size of your rectangle and going with the larger design file. So lots of options. Or you could go down to the four by four, make a little bit smaller mug rug and still adorable. So here are the 10 threads that you get with the machine embroidery palette. All these great colors that are perfect for Valentine's Day, spring, and beyond, really. They can take you all the way into summer, these colors. So pinks, purples, magenta, greens, you name it. And then, of course, you also get a black and a white, which we all need to restock at all times, right? <laughs> so these are all the 10 rayon thread colors that coordinate with all six of these designs. And you may have noticed already that these designs are applique designs done in the hoop. So we're building our fabrics while the design stitches out. It will stop at certain points for us to add fabric, trim it away beyond the stitching, and then move forward with the design. So I'll show you how that comes together. So this is the design that I chose. It's called Love You More. It looks really great on this gray. I'm kind of rethinking the pink that I chose because uh, for my background fabric because it kind of um, ran into the pink shading on the thread. So I think it looks really nice in that gray, um, but you know, hindsight. <laughs> All right, also this would be really cute on your mug rug. This one's called URT Rific, very cute. Also Best Tees Forever, this is one of my favorites. Now this one is sized, you know, horizontally. So it would take up a little bit more room on your mug rug, but no harm, no foul. You can still put your mug right on top of, you know, one of the mugs, part of the design. All right, QT pie, that's another option as well. Very cute for a little mug rug. And party animal. So if you're making this for a birthday, let's say, this would be a really great, choice for a design. Okay, so once you have chosen the design that you wanna use, of course, we are going to load it into our machines and gather up the threads that we need. If you got uh, the machine embroidery palette for this, then that makes it super easy. Just open up your bag and start with thread color number one. I used a basic 
a sulky uh, 60 weight bobbin thread in the bobbin. But I do want to mention that when I switched to the black thread for the lettering and for the tea bag string, I also switched my bobbin thread to black. Um, I just didn't want any show through around the edges or what have you with the white bobbin thread. So when I'm using, especially for lettering, I like to match my bobbin thread to the top thread. So seeing as how the 60 weight bobbin thread comes in neutrals, comes in white and black on the spool, and then you can also get pre-wounds in white and black and gray and tan. Since those only come in those colors, if you want to match up your bobbin thread to the top thread, you can go with Sulky Poly Light Thread, which is a 60 weight thread. We always want our bobbin thread to be a little bit lighter weight than the thread on top because the way machine embroidery designs are digitized or actually the way the tension works with your machine, when you go into embroidery mode, the tension shifts a little bit so that your upper thread gets slightly pulled to the back side of your embroidery. That's how you know you have a nice balanced stitch. So really you should never be seeing the bobbin thread on the top of your work. If you are seeing the bobbin thread there, then you need to make some tension adjustments to your machine. So always consult your manual when you're making tension adjustments so that you know, you know where and how to do it properly and how to get back to neutral uh, when you want to, you know, or when you need to, when you're sewing a different fabric or et cetera. All right, so after we have loaded our design into the machine, we're going to begin the stitch out. I'm using a magnetic hoop here because quite frankly, I love my magnetic hoops and I hardly ever use my standard hoops anymore because they're so amazing. So for this project, I actually hooped my background fabric with my batting and then the stabilizer behind that. So it almost gives my applique design a little bit of a trapunto effect because I'm stitching through all of those layers for the heavy stitch areas. And then for the parts that are not heavy stitch areas, it kind of pops up a little bit, puffs up a little bit. That's because of the batting underneath. So I kept my batting as large as my background fabric so then when my embroidery is complete and I want to add this fun free motion quilting, my batting is already attached where my embroidery design was sewn. So if you don't have a magnetic hoop, the batting layer is probably going to be too thick for you to hoop in your standard machine. So you will need to hoop the stabilizer alone and then float the batting and background fabric over the top of your stabilizer Use a little bit of KK2000 temporary spray adhesive to secure the layers to the stabilizer. And then you can also do a based around design or based around the hoop function before you begin the embroidery. That way everything stays nice and neat and attached to the stabilizer throughout the stitch out. All right, you can also opt to leave the batting out of your stitch out and hoop your soft and sheer stabilizer with your background fabric, do your entire embroidery, and then add the batting right before you're gonna do the quilting. So that's another option if you're not using a magnetic hoop. If you are using a magnetic hoop, the world is your oyster, okay? We have magnetic hoops at sulky.com and they really allow you to hoop what was previously unhoopable. Things like quilts, things like denim, Things like a collar, which normally doesn't fit in a hoop. You can sandwich that puppy right to, you know, right with the stabilizer, base the edges to the stabilizer, and you can embroider it. So many different things you can do with magnetic hoops. So if you want to check those out, head to sulky.com. You can plug in your brand, make, and model of your machine, and then it will give you all the available hoop sizes in the magnetic hoop style that coordinate with your embroidery machine. And they speak to your machine just like your standard hoops do. So as soon as you clip it in place, your machine knows what size is on your uh, uh, module and you can get stitching. So these are really amazing, amazing things. I know many of you 
have converted to the magnetic hoops because of us talking here on So What. So, all right. So the first step of our applique design is going to be our placement stitch for that first fabric. Now, some of the other designs might have the applique added as a different step in the design. So definitely consult your color chart to make sure that you're following the correct steps at the right time when to place your fabric for the applique. Um, and for example, the Best Tees Forever design, that has four applique fabrics attached. So there will be more steps for adding the applique. But for the Love You More design that I'm showing here, there's just one applique fabric and it happens in the beginning. So our very first um, color stop is going to be our placement stitch for our tea bag fabric. So here you can see I've done the placement stitch. And now I'm going to place my fabric over the placement stitch. What I forgot to mention was I like to add fusible web to my in the hoop applique fabrics, even if I don't fuse it right away. And even if, I don't know, if I don't need an extra layer of, let's say, interfacing, something like that. The fusible web, the perfect applique fusible web, is going to do a few things for in the hoop applique. First off, it adds a little bit of thread count to our fabric. So you can use a lightweight quilting cotton here for your applique, and it's going to take a lot of stitches because you've added, you know, sort of thread count or extra body to your background fabric. It also curbs the fraying edge that sometimes you get when you trim away the fabric close to your placement lines before you go to the next step, which is your satin finishing st steps. So because you have attached that fusible, it just kind of seals the edges a little bit better and you won't have that, you know, fraying edge that you can sometimes get that when you do the satin stitch over, sometimes they like to poke out between the stitches and you have to go in and clean that up. So the fusible web is going to curb that. Um, let's see, also it minimizes show through. So if you're using a print background fabric and then you want your tea bag uh, fabric to be a light gray, let's say, that fusible web is going to help so that you don't have show through on your background fabric. So I always like to apply it to the back of my fabrics, even for in the hoop applique, which in most cases, digitizers say you don't need it. And that's one of the you know, benefits of doing applique in the hoop. But I always add it anyway for all of the reasons I just described. So after we add our fabric, which has our fusible web behind it, we're going to run the next color stop, which are the tacking stitches that secure our fabric to the background. Now we are going to grab our trusty applique scissors. I like using a duckbill applique scissor. Some people like using a double curve applique scissor um, because it has that curved uh, tipped point. Uh, so when you're clipping um, or trimming the fabric close to those tacking stitches, it doesn't nick through the stitching and the uh, tip of the scissor stays off of the surface of the fabric. I like to use a duckbill applique scissor because I can get that duckbill really close to the tacking stitches without slicing through them. And that allows me personally a uh, greater sort of movement with the scissors. Um, and I can just get as close as I can uh, to those tacking stitches. So now we're going to trim the fabric close to the edges and we're going to run the rest of the design. Ooh, but before we run the rest of the design, you'll remove the hoop from the machine to trim up your um, applique fabric. At this point, if you happen to have a small iron or a little travel iron um, or one of the small um, applique, let me show you my small irons. I have this small iron. We carry these at sulky.com. This is really handy for applique in the hoop. 
This tip gets super hot. Um, this is really great for small binding edges and for in the hoop appliques or, you know, appliques that are not in the hoop. I also have, whoop, this one might be plugged in. <laughs> I also have this small scale um, craft iron that I sometimes will use in a larger hoop. So in my monster hoop, I can use this larger iron to fuse my in the hoop appliques before moving forward with the next steps at this point, after you trim around those tacking stitches. So that is up to you. If you would like to fuse down your applique, this would be the moment that you do it. After you trim next to those tacking stitches, you can take your hoop, be careful nothing shifts, and carefully just iron to fuse your applique pieces, then put the hoop back onto the machine and finish stitching the design elements. Of course, we're going to trim up our jump threads. Uh, there are very few jump threads in this design, but they do happen with the lettering. So you'll want to uh, trim those up using your curved tip squeezers. And then our embroidery is complete. So then we're going to remove our hoop from the machine, remove the fabric from the hoop. If you have not fused the applique piece yet, you can do so after you finish the elements of the design. I would just use a press cloth and or try to keep my iron away from the stitches as much as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we're gonna trim up our mug rub to the desired size. All right, so mine is, what is mine? Let's see. It is about six and a half by eight and a half. And again, honestly, I really just eyeballed it. I wanted a good border around my design. Um, and then I also wanted to offset my design a little bit so that I could add a strip of ribbon and then have some open areas to show off the quilting as well as put the mug without compromising the design. So when you have your mug on there, you can still admire your, your cute little embroidery. So after you trim it up to the desired size, now comes the fun part of quilting. So for this, and I have another question for you all about this. For this, I decided to drop my feed dogs, use a heavier weight blendables cotton thread, and try my hand at some free motion quilting. Because this is a smaller project, it's not as intimidating as tackling a huge quilt with free motion work. I mean, that just gives me the heebie-jeebies just thinking about it sometimes. I know I can do it, but I really gotta get in the zone. So for something like this, I find this is a great opportunity to try things like free motion quilting that I might be a little, you know, intimidated by or need practice, right? So I decided to practice my free motion work, but I like to plot my free motion quilting. I really don't trust myself to just lower the feed dogs and start moving around underneath the presser foot because I just don't have the greatest, you know, visibility. Sometimes I'll think, I think I'm turning a corner and then I'm almost running into my previous stitch. Oy. So instead I take my removable fabric marker. You could also use chalk. And I just plot my quilting all over the mug rug. So first I did like a meandering line and then I added little hearts to it here and there, just every so often until I liked the look of it. So I used a um, heat removable marking pen. If you're go going to use a water soluble or air soluble marking pen, you really want to be careful that you remove your markings right after you stitch over your lines so that you don't accidentally go to press your finished mug rug and now all of a sudden your lines are permanent. This is really the reason that I prefer these friction highlighter pens um, or just friction marking pens. I, I actually prefer the highlighter ones um, because the ballpoint ones sometimes can put an indentation into your fabric, especially if you have quilting layers, they'll kind of press down a little bit too far into the fabric fibers. 
and then you can kind of get a tinge of seeing it. So I prefer these friction highlighter pens. Um, but at any rate, if I accidentally iron it, the mark just goes away. So that's really why I prefer them because so many times I accidentally iron a water soluble pen and then I've ruined the project because now you can see my markings. Um, also using chalk, always a good, a great idea as well. If you happen to have that. All right. So if free motion is not your cup of tea, thank you for that, Stephanie. <laughs> Very punny of you. If it's not your cup of tea, then you can quilt this in the matter of your choice. You can do straight line quilting uh, down, you know, vertically across your mug rug. You can do matchstick quilting. You can do no quilting at all if you want. Um, if you want to do no quilting at all, might I suggest a different embellishment? So you'll also notice I added some ribbon to mine. I found this scrap of ribbon that was the perfect pink color of the fabrics and the design that I was choosing. And I just decided to stitch it down along the edge of my mug rug. You could add some more ribbons over here or some different trims that you might have in your stash. This is a great thing. I already mentioned using your uh, stash for fabrics, but if you have these little bits of even pom-pom trims or bits of lace or little bits of ribbon that are not long enough to do anything with, but you can't bring yourself to throw them out, mug rugs are great for those. If you have only a small little bit, put it along the corner and just stitch it down, top stitch it down. It just adds a something, you know, really cute to it. And, you know, for Valentine's, it's all about the bits and bobbles and little things we find here and there and, you know, little lace bits that look like doilies and things. Those are all great for Valentine's. Make it look very scrapbooky, you know? All right. So if you want to try your hand at free motion quilting, hey, maybe we need a class on free motion quilting. Would you all try it if I made it as easy as possible for you to drop your feed dogs and follow along? and get the most out of your sewing machines and quilt some things your own self instead of shipping them off to a long armor? Let me know in the comments. Stephanie says yes. Cecilia says yes. All right, good to know. All right, so we're gonna plot our quilting lines, whether we're doing free motion or you can also plot your quilting lines if you wanna do straight line quilting. I really recommend plotting them though, instead of, you know, just trying to use your machine bed um, markings, you know, to space your lines. It's just so much easier when you mark them on the fabric. But you might be, be a more advanced quilter than that. You might have um, a, um, why am I blanking on what it is called? You attach it to your presser foot and you can adjust it for, um, your, oh my gosh, y'all will tell me what it's called. Anyways, you might have some other ways of gauging your seam allowance and how far apart your quilting stitches are, or you can simply just mark them on the fabric so that they're equidistant or placed wherever you want them. Quilting guide. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Marilyn says a class on free motion. Count me in. Michelle will try it. Sharon says yes to the free motion. All right, let's go. Love it. All right, so once you have plotted your quilting lines, we are going to stitch over them. So as I mentioned, I decided to go with a 30 weight cotton thread, which is a little bit thicker so that the quilting stitches will pop more, um, not pop, but be more um, prevalent. And I went with this pretty blendables that had the teals and the pinks and the rose. And it just really went with uh, the rest of the design and the rest of the embroidery threads that I was using as well. So when using this 30 weight cotton thread, you want to go up to a 9014 needle. So I used a 9014 quilting needle. I kept the same 60 weight bobbin thread in the bobbin. Did I? Hold please. So before we add this free motion quilting, we need to put our backing on as well. So you'll want to put your backing fabric on and spray it with a little KK2000 and then put your 
uh, top fabric that's embroidered on top. So we will have our embroidered fabric, our batting, our soft and sheer stabilizer, and then our backing fabric. So now we got a real quilt sandwich going on. I only spray basted it because it's so small. I knew I was gonna finish the quilting all in one fell swoop. So no need for pinning or any of that. The, the KK2000 did a great job. Um, let's see, what other tips for that? Oh, for the bobbin thread. So actually I did not use the 60 weight bobbin thread. I really don't know why I was saying that. Um, because now we have our pretty fabric on the back and we want our quilting to look pretty on the back as well. I actually used a 50 weight cotton thread now for the quilting that coordinated with the back fabric. So it's just a little bit light pink, 50 weight cotton on the back side of my mug rug. So now we're set up. We can lower the feed dogs and put on our spring loaded free motion foot. Now with your machine, you may have um, a clear little snap on free motion embroidery foot. Uh, your machine manufacturer might recommend that you use the same foot that you use for machine embroidery for free motion work. This is actually what I use um, because it works best for me when I'm doing free motion. Or you might have an optional foot that you need to purchase as an accessory for free motion work that has um, a more visible uh, spring screw to it. It might even have an open hole at the bottom, so more like a C, so you can really see what you're doing. Really, no pun intended there. Um, all right, so we are going to set the machine for free motion. We're going to take some breaths. And we are going to stitch along those plotted lines. You can go as slow or as fast as you are comfortable with. Um, you can opt to use some free motion quilting or some quilting gloves, really. They're not called free motion. I happen to have a pair of these quilting gloves. They are nice and cushioned. So when you have your hand on the machine bed, you don't have fatigue if you're doing a larger project. They also have touchscreen fingertips, so I don't have to take the gloves off to fiddle with my machine if I want to lengthen my stitch length, etc. For the 30 weight thread, I did lengthen my stitch length to 3.0, um, just because the thread is a little bit heavier, so you can use a longer stitch length um, and have great results. So at any rate, there's a lot of things that make your free motion life a little bit easier, um, especially if you have any kind of arthritis or anything in your joints or your wrists, if you have carpal tunnel or something like this, um, it's a great idea to get these gloves. You can also use them just for regular sewing. It doesn't have to be for quilting applications. Um, they're very flexible. That reminds me of a golf, golf glove, if you've ever gone golfing or if you are a golfer. Um, they kind of feel like that with the mesh, breathable mesh on one side um, and the nice grippers. And you can kind of adjust the fit a little bit with the Velcro closure. They come in different sizes. We have them at sulky.com. Um, I believe mine is a size large because I have these giant hands. Um, but at any rate, those make things really nice if you're doing free motion work. So we're going to stitch along our quilting lines, whether we're doing free motion or straight line quilting or echo quilting around our embroidery motif, whatever we want to do. And then once our quilting is complete, we're going to make sure to remove those fabric markings. Um, as I mentioned before, especially if you're using a water or air soluble marking pen, you want to remove all those markings before you do any pressing so that your markings aren't permanent. But thankfully, my markings are removed with the heat of an iron, so I just go over the top of the stitching with a moderate temperature iron, and the markings are gone. Love that. All right, so now we get to get our embellishments on. You can sew on buttons. You can add bits of lace, like I mentioned. You can add some ribbons of all kinds of widths. Wherever your ribbon looks good to you, audition it on the mug rug, pin it or clip it down, 
and then top stitch it onto the piece. You can use that 30 weight cotton thread to top stitch it down, but I switched to that same 50 weight pink cotton thread that I was using on the back. I used on the front to top stitch my ribbon so that it matched my ribbon and kind of blended in. So just another little touch you can add to it that maybe you don't think about when you're making um, stuff like this is go into your ribbon and baubles and bits and beads stash and just kind of dress it up a little bit, you know, have fun with it. So once you have added all the embellishments that you would like to add and you have determined that it is complete, it's simply time to bind our little mug rug. So I have a secret. I used prepackaged binding. I happen to have the color white in a drawer of mine. I was like, what am I going to use with this? I had only one package of it anyways. So I used prepackaged binding and it was a very narrow binding, but it still worked. I like a narrow binding, super narrow binding when I'm working on a smaller scale project. That way the binding doesn't compete and like go farther into the mug rug itself. Um, it's just really there to finish the edges. So I added my prepackaged binding, mitered the corners, and then I hand sewed the binding to the back just with a little whip stitch or slip stitch or whatever kind of invisible stitch you prefer. You could also set your machine for a decorative stitch and do a little heart stitch along your binding, making sure you're catching the binding fold on the back of your mug rug. And that would be a really cute way to finish it as well. But again, since it's such a small project, I could really hand sew this and be done in no time. So it wasn't a huge quilt that I had to commit to hand sewing, um, no problems. And had I used my quilting gloves for the hand sewing, I probably would have had an easier time on it as well. <laughs> All right. Polly is saying, where can I buy the designs? So our cup of tea design collection is available at sulky.com. You can grab up the whole collection, which comes with six designs in three sizes, or you can grab up the designs individually. If you're only interested in, let's say, the Love You More design, you can just grab that one up as well. You'll get all three sizes with the one purchase. So you have um, options for mug rug sizes or making a placemat using the same technique or table runner, you, may, you name it. If you purchase up the palette, you will get the design collection in its entirety and all of these beautiful sulky rayon threads that coordinate with the design. So 10 thread spools in the palette and six designs in three sizes, or you can purchase up the design collection by itself, which is today's gifty for one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, sharing, liking, all of those good things somehow engaging with me today during the post. That's all you have to do to be eligible to win the Cup of Tea Machine Embroidery Collection. So I will be picking one lucky viewer who is doing all of those things. Um, and make sure that you have liked our Facebook page if you're watching there or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching there. And that way I can contact you if you are the winner. All right. So after our binding is complete, Binding it in the matter, manner of our choice, if you would like to use leftover fabric strips to do the binding or prepackaged binding, it's entirely up to you. And it has a nice little finished look to it. And now you can package it up with a really cute Valentine mug, a hot cocoa bomb, maybe a couple of chocolates. And I mean, so incredibly cute. You could also just package it up with your favorite kind of tea or a little bag of coffee, and then you don't have to include a mug at all. But isn't this the cutest mug? I'm telling you, they're so, so cute. I couldn't resist. <laughs> all right, so here's just a couple of inspiration photos uh, using that cup of tea machine embroidery palette. So once you grab up the palette, you make your mug rug, you use a couple of the designs, you might wanna make um, this cute little snap and go little travel tray 
This is made out of sulky felty. So you've got two pieces of sulky felty with some stabilizer between, so it has some structure to stand up, and then some carefully placed snaps so that when you fold the edges together, it snaps shut or it snaps closed and it creates this little tray. So I embroidered the inside of the tray with the Best Tees Forever design, which I believe is super cute. All right, so that's just an idea. This is a project at sulky.com. You can find it on our blog um, as well. And this is just another one of the designs filled with love. It's a little teapot that I did on a cute little um, towel blank that we have at sulky.com. We have these towel blanks with this little hem stitching and the colored border. We have them in pink and teal and blue and black and they're really great blanks for things like this. And I love to use an applique design that, and then you can kind of match up the thread in your applique with that uh, colored border so it coordinates nicely. This would be really cute as a gift as well with a little pack of tea, something like this, or a little, um, you know, the, the little metal tea bag things, whatever they're called. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not a tea connoisseur, but I do enjoy a good cup of tea every so often. All right, so that's just a little bit of inspiration for using the cup of tea machine embroidery palette. Um, let's see, I love it. Tea is my go-to morning beverage. A tea ball. Thank you so much. See, this is why we come together. You guys can finish my sentences for me. <laughs> Um, Kathy says, if you give the basket as a gift, once the recipient removes the bakery, et cetera, they have the cute design at the bottom. Yes, it's a nice little surprise. That maybe they didn't even see or know was there before. So love that. Julie says, this is a great mug rug. Thank you. Mug rugs are on my to-do list. Would be cute on hot pads. Really cute. Definitely. Or maybe a tea cozy. We've done a tea cozy project in the past before as well. These designs would be really, really cute on that as well. All right. So many of you said I would love a free motion quilting tutorial. Would love to share that. Would love to learn more. Um, all right. So let's drop the feed dogs of our sewing machine and dive into free motion quilting very, very soon. Clovis is drink, drinking tea now, so she is in the spirit. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Have so many friends who only drink tea. Can't wait to make them gifts. Perfect. Love it. All right. Well, you can grab up the full tutorial on the Sulky blog. I link directly to it in the description of today's post. So make sure that you're hitting that little see more button so you can find that tutorial as well as all the products that I talked about today. Also at the very bottom of the description of today's post is the link to register for our 3D spring wall hanging embroidery session with designs by Juju. And you will want to be sure to grab up your kit at the special price. It is on sale. This event is beginning or activated on February 13th. So after February 13th, you can access all of the videos at any time. It will live forever in your personal library at sewingonline.sulky.com. So if you want to make it again a year from now and you forgot where you saved all of your files, it will still be in your library right there for you to review and retake as many times as you wish. Grab up your design files. As I mentioned, when you register for the sewing session, you get all the design files included with your registration fee. The design um, comes in multiple sizes with at least four hoopings. I want to say three or four hoopings. Um, and so there's a lot, a lot of files that you get with purchase of your um, embroidery session in lots of different sizes. Um, also, you'll want to make sure, as I mentioned, grab up your kit while it's on sale. This is at this um, a really, really amazing sale price. I think you will find that if you were to purchase just the thread alone, that would be the price of this entire kit. So definitely take advantage of that. You won't have to go searching for all of these fabrics. You'll have everything that you need right at your fingertips, including that um, puffy foam interlining that you need for the structure of the wall hanging. So make sure you are registered and ready to go for February 13th. 
Again, it's not a live class, so you don't need to be available on that day. That's just the day that the videos will be available for you to view at any time that's convenient for you. All right, let's see. Do you still have the Tea Cozy tutorial and where can I find it? I believe if you go to blog.sulky.com and you just search Tea Cozy, you'll be able to find it because we've only done, to my knowledge, one of those. Um, so you should be able to find that. It's kind of a hack on a different pattern. Um, all right. If you have trouble finding it, just email us, email us at info at sulky.com, and I'm sure we can provide that link for you as well. And as always, if you had a question that I didn't answer here today, or if you ever have a question while you're working your way through a product or through a project or using some Sulky product that you have questions about, always reach out to us at info at sulky.com because we are here to make sure that you have the best possible experience at your sewing machine. And um, thanks for joining me today on another So What? I'll see you next Tuesday.